guys, I'm Sriman. Welcome to Mind Structure for Life. In this video, I'll be covering a macro mind map of all the 21 different topics in chemistry in the A-level syllabus. And if you're an A-level student taking chemistry and now asking me questions like how to study for chemistry, the number one tip I can give you is have a macro understanding of your chemistry syllabus. All right. This video is for you. Please watch it till the end so you can gain the utmost understanding from this video. All right. Now, in this new whiteboard that I bought, I could have made a separate video to show, like, unbox this whiteboard, but it's a new whiteboard. And this is solely for the purpose of education. All right. So, in this whiteboard, I had the 21 different topics in the chemistry A level syllabus. All right. Or just estimated number. Okay, I'm running through the 21 different topics. Mohr concept and stoichiometry, atomic structure, chemical bonding one and two, so it's combined, gaseous state, energetics, kinetics, equilibria, all right? Then this section is most of the organic chemistry subjects, so intro to organic chemistry, and then you will be studying alkenes, alkenes, arenes, halogenal alkenes, alcohols, carbonyl compounds, carboxylic acids, amines, amides, esters, and proteins. And I know it's a very huge list, but it's not to scare you. It's going to be a huge transition from O-level organic chemistry, but watching this video will help you digest all of these topics much easier, right? I'm guaranteeing that. And then this is not a separate category. This is a, a separate, all the remaining topics, which is periodic table one and two, acid-base or so ionic equilibria, solubility equilibria, Electrochemistry 1 and 2, which is also combined like this, and transition metals. Alright, I agree that many of you have not even looked at all the topics yet and you're just starting on your A level chemistry journey. Alright, but if you're starting on it, the most important two chapters that you should focus on is chapters two and three and that will be atomic structure and chemical bonding all right so let's go atomic structure and chemical bonding all right these two are the most important chapters of the entire chemistry syllabus you want to do well for chemistry, this is the two topics that must be your weaknesses, all right, if you're not doing well, all right? Now, what is atomic structure and chemical bonding, okay? Atomic structure deals with this simple thing called electronic configuration, okay? Atomic structure deals with electronic configurations of an atom, all right, or ion as well. Chemical bonding has two subchapters or the two subtopics that I want to talk about. And number one is the idea of bonding. And number two is the idea of IMF. What are IMF? IMF means intermolecular forces. Alright? And what is bonding? Bonding in all levels we have studied, so I'm not gonna bore you, but just to recall your three types of bonding, right? Ionic, covalent, as well as metallic. All right, and in the chemical bonding syllabus, right, you will be studying some more weirder things like ionic with covalent, covalent with ionic, the idea of polarization, which I won't go into because it's a macro mind map, right? Under intermolecular forces, you'll be studying three more as well, and that is called ID. ID, PD, PD, and thirdly, hydrogen bond. All right. ID, ID refers to instantaneous dipole, induced dipole interactions. PD, PD refers to permanent dipole, permanent dipole interactions. H bomb is hydrogen bonding. So these are the three IMFs and three bondings. And these two topics explain explain two things okay two things which is very important now let's take it okay there are two things that these two topics explain and you must know it for your exams number one stability 
of molecules, the stability of molecules. And number two is, is the explained physical and chemical properties. Okay? These are the two things that usually for chemistry exams, these are the two concepts, two question types that these two topics focus on. All right? Stability of molecules refer to the molecular geometry, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and explain physical and chemical properties. This is very important for the comparison questions, okay? Comparison questions. So, one mark for comparison questions. What I mean by comparison questions, right? They will ask you to compare the boiling point and melting point of two different substances during your exams, right? And then, where does the answer come from? It comes from chemical bonding and atomic structure, all right? So, this too is something that you should remember, okay? Now, there are more concepts that these two topics cover, all right? And this will actually be a bridge to the main, most nightmarish topic of chemistry, which is organic chem, all right? Organic chem. And what are the concepts? I read in a different pen. It is concept of resonance, the concept of electronegativity, electronegativity, as well as the idea of molecular geometry. What is molecular geometry? There's something called the BSDPR theory. You will learn in chemical bonding. And it's very important to understand the idea of bonding, IMF, and these three concepts for organic chem. All right? I'll bring you through the five main reaction types for organic chem that you must know how to draw and explain. And your teachers and lecturers will teach you. So if you're not into organic chem yet, no worries. Okay? But I'll just give you a preview. Okay? First, you'll be studying something called FRS. I'll explain later. Then you have electrophilization, you have EA, and then you have ES, and then you have NS, and then you have N. Okay, NS is not natural service here in Singapore. No, that's not what I mean, all right? Free radical substitution. What is free radical substitution? That's FRS. That is in the topic of alkanes. Alkanes, not alkenes, alkanes. Electrophilic addition comes in the topic of alkenes, okay? Alkenes. Electrophilic addition comes in alkenes. Electrophilic substitution comes in the topic of arenes, where we're dealing with those annoying benzene rings that we're going to scare you for your entire life. And then NS, which is nucleophilic substitution, not national service, nucleophilic substitution, which you will cover in halogenal alkenes, okay? Halogenal alkenes, okay? Then nucleophilic addition, you'll be covering this in carbonyl compounds. And then you're probably going to ask me, right? Wait, there were so many other organic topics. Where do they fit in? Most of them have other types of reactions. And those of the reactions include um, condensation, you have elimination, and these are the things that are covered in the other topics, okay, others. But where do you get a knowledge of all the other reactions? It comes from a very important topic called, okay, I'd like to write it here, intro to organic chem, okay, intro to organic chem. This is the first topic we'll be studying organic chem where we'll study the different types of reactions and it'll be introduced to the idea of organic chemistry. So this is the core, okay? And then you'll study these five types of reactions in organic chemistry. Then what is the essence? What is the general overview or attitude that people have for organic chemistry, all right? I'll bring you through the three types of molecules that you must remember when you're studying organic chem. It will be free radicals, okay? Free radicals. So what are free radicals? Basically a carbon that has a lone electron. And we'll study it, okay? Number two, we'll be studying what are nucleophiles. Number three, we'll be studying electrophiles, okay? And also be more other stuff like the idea of maybe carbocations, 
carbocations. It's basically a, a carbon, positively charged carbon. And so you'll be studying these four main types in organic chemistry. You must know how they behave. So nucleophiles and electrophiles are like opposite charges and opposite charges attract because nucleophiles are electron rich. Okay, E minus rich. They are electron rich. Electrophiles are electron poor. Okay, so it's like electron deficient. Not electron poor, electron deficient, right? So these are opposites and they tend to attract each other. And this concept comes around in this five main reactions she'll be studying. Carbocations are also electron deficient. Okay, these are also electron deficient. Now, what are free radicals? Free radicals, as I explained, has a lone electron, which is technically electron deficient as well. Okay, so it's also electron deficient. Okay. So the main thing you need to know about organic chemistry is that nucleophiles and electrophiles always attract. Electron-rich regions usually attract electron-poor regions. This is a very important point. And this is a concept that's applicable to almost all of the organic chemistry topics. So please remember this or write it down somewhere, okay? Now talking about the stability of molecules, okay, let's move away from organic chem. Talking about the stability of molecules bring me to the three most, probably the most trickiest of topics outside organic chem, which would be I can actually take more space energetics kinetic as well as equilibria okay? energetics, kinetics and equilibria how does it react? because reactions operate basically on forming a more stable product okay from unstable to stable product then the reactions are feasible so basically the idea of stability of molecules is heavily linked to these three chapters and these three chapters are just branches of atomic structure and chemical bonding in fact because they explain the stability of molecules right okay so what is energetics what is kinetics and what is equilibrium this is a pretty massive topic three big big massive topics right what will you be learning in each of these topics energetics will be covering three main um, letters okay so that would be delta h okay delta s and delta g all right delta h delta s and delta g what is delta h is the energetics okay the change in energy from the reactants to the products okay so if it's a, if a reaction is energetically feasible or not, that's delta H. Delta S is associated with entropy or the disorder of a system. So, for example, you compare a gas versus a liquid, which is more in a greater disorder, right? A gas, right? Because the molecules are far apart, moving at high speeds. You have learned this before. So I wouldn't want to bore you with that. So that's the idea of entropy and change in entropy in reactions. And delta G it's what we call thermodynamic feasibility of reactions or spontaneity of reactions whether a reaction is spontaneous a very important misconception that people have that you guys should take note is spontaneous doesn't mean a reaction is fast spontaneous means a reaction occurs okay that is important distinction to take note okay so there's basically a very good formula that integrates these three um variables which is Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. All right, this is the formula for we will study under energetics. Okay, energetics will be about the energetic feasibility and thermodynamics. All right, this is the thing they were studying energetics. Now, what is kinetics? You're asking me. Kinetics deals with this thing called speed. speed of reactions and the main um, speed of reactions right uh, they deal with the idea of activation energy which we will call AE so how is this this is about how fast a reaction takes place rather than whether it's spontaneous is how fast the reaction takes place for example the conversion of carbon in the graphite form 
to diamond is energetically feasible okay the product diamond has less um, energy than the reactant which is graphite but the problem is the activation energy is extremely high which means that the speed is low and the reaction the conversion is very slow so this this three topics deal with the idea of reactions okay reactions this is important okay so let's kinetics deal with the speed and what the hell is equilibria all right equilibria deals with the how far or the extent i'll tell you this it deals with how far or the extent to which a reaction occurs so a reaction doesn't occur completely okay it just goes to maybe a certain equilibrium state which we'll be studying in the idea of equilibrium okay and i want to branch equilibria into three main subsets okay perhaps four but the three main ones are this okay the three main ones are okay i don't have space i'll just erase this part okay number one it deals with the normal one so this is the normal then you'll be studying the idea of a b acid base and then you have sol which i'll name solubility equilibrium okay normal one will deal with these kind of constants which include all right k and q you'll be dealing with this constants k and q all right in acid base equilibria you'll be dealing with three of them ka kb and kw okay in solubility equilibria, we'll be dealing with this thing called Ksp. All right, these are constants that you will be facing when you study these three topics. But understanding the thing, the main understanding is that these three topics is a subset of equilibria. Under solubility, I would like to raise two important concepts that you must have when answering questions under the topic of solubility equilibria. Number one, PPT when two solutions mix so is that a precipitate when two solutions are mixed and number two um solid in solution and then you ask the solubility all right these are the two types of questions they will ask you this is the pattern that i noticed and i understood when my tutor went through this topic in class ppt and two solutions mixed is would there be a ppt and a solid is to a dissolving solution what is the solubility all right please remember this and try to do this thing for all the topics in chemistry okay the general attitude and pattern that you must notice when answering the questions in the exams is this all right i really apologize for the really untidy work i have right here I will need more space for the other topics, so I'll, I'll try to put it. I'll try to take a proper number of space. Equilibria has another concept. Equilibria is linked to one more concept, which will be called um, TM. What is TM? Transition metals, okay? Transition metals deal with another constant. You know, there are so many constants, right? There are another constant, which is called k step, which is stability. So transition metals involve the, trans the, the, the complexes, the aqua complexes, or the complexes that the transition metal ions form, all right? Which you'll be studying, and it's a pretty intense topic. And very importantly, the very important concept right here is that again it is linked to atomic structure and chemical bonding and how is it linked to atomic structure and chemical bonding may ask you there will be types of questions where i also explain why are transition metal complexes colored okay number one question and then they'll ask you to explain it and then you need to talk about the electron configuration the dd transitions which you'll be studying okay but note that 
every almost all the topics okay branch out from atomic structure and chemical bonding all right the next topic all right will be electrochemistry electrochemistry okay electro chemistry okay electrochemistry has two subsets just one and two number one it is electrolytic and number two it will be electrochemical all right electrolytic and electrochemical there is an important distinction between both of them one it one is very spontaneous okay which is a thing i talked about earlier electrochemical reactions are spontaneous okay and electrolytic reactions are not spontaneous and you need a battery to do it and in this topic the very important letter that you will be studying is actually e not very important letter okay so electrochemistry um it is kind of linked to atomic structure because it's technically um dealing with electrons all right and you you would you would know as you study the topic you would know how it's linked everything's linked to atomic structure and chemical bonding and the last topic i would like to highlight is the idea of gaseous state so gaseous state okay and gaseous state is very simple very simple to understand all right let me explain okay very simple very easy okay the only distinction you make is ideal gas number two you have real gas okay so ideal gas if you know from maybe your o level you may remember that equation p v is equals to n r t this annoying annoying um formula and this is applicable to ideal gases and real gases right do not obey this equation and the only distinction between ideal gas and real gas is the conditions at which each of them occur okay so only distinction is that um to convert from real to ideal okay you need to have high temperature and low pressure okay high temperature and low pressure okay if the font is too small please uh, comment down below in case it's too small i'll send maybe a bigger version of it for you guys as well so low pressure and high temperature all right that is the distinction and ultimately how is this topic linked to atomic structure and chemical bonding again a very important concept which you understand um which you will be covering in this topic is the uh, right here yeah? deviation from ideal gas okay i'm just writing deviation from ideal okay and what i mean by that is that real gases okay are deviate from ideal gases based on whether they have these intermolecular forces id id pd pd and hydrogen bonding okay so the stronger the imf right the more they deviate from ideal gas behavior all right so actually you can link this to intermolecular forces and that makes more sense all right all right there are some more topics okay there's some more topics which i won't like to cloud and i will be making a separate video on how to deal with this i, I believe it's one of the more inorganic chemistry topics that include pt1 and pt2 right then there is qualitative analysis which is something i did not highlight because it's more more relevant to practical than theory but both still need it all right and our, our, the last one is more concept okay which is the first thing that you learn and I'll, I'll be explaining these three topics okay these three topics in a separate video for you guys okay how to improve okay this is an inorganic chemistry which is very hard to memorize the reactions and all the equations and i'll make a separate video for you guys or like to tell you all the memory tips and the tricks that i use to identify the patterns so that i can memorize it much more easily all right and here you have a pretty untidy but a very um, macro mind map of all the topics in the chemistry a level syllabus right thank you guys for watching this video if you really believe that this video helped you a lot to understand chemistry please share it with your friends 
please subscribe and turn on the notification bell tell your friends to do it as well and i'll see you in the next video where i'll talk about these three topics thank you